in Texas right now, Attorney General Ken Paxton is in the middle of like, a, a, I guess, a state kind of investigation or a hearing on a bunch of different like impropriety that he's being accused of. Basically, corruption. Um, apparently... Paxton used the his office to get a real estate developer um, to to get a home for his mistress or something like that, right, Bradley? I mean, do we know what yeah. the full details are here? Um, but there's a there's essentially crimes that he's being accused of. Uh, Ken Paxton was one of the guys at the front of the line saying that old people should uh, should should sacrifice themselves at the altar of COVID to make sure Take one the for the team keeps going. Take one for the team. But in the middle of these hearings, the... Yeah, so, so, sorry. Yeah. so the investigators who include former prosecutors outlined the evidence they had collected against Mr. Paxton, finding that he had abused and misused his office to help a real estate developer and donor and retaliated against those in his office who spoke up against him for doing so. Listen, the investigators if, said if, that of the, of the roughly 80 employees in the attorney general's office contacted for the inquiry, only one did not fear retaliation for participating. Gotcha. All right. So Listen, this is... if you can't hook up some developers you're close with as the Texas attorney general... Don't that, run I mean, for office. Point? What's the point of being the Texas Attorney General if you can? <laughs> Honestly, I mean that's that's supposed to be one of the perks, don't you get it? It's a perk. That's why I that's why I, he 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 wanted to be in office so he could do these kinds of things. Um but like it, as a way to kind of deflect from the accusations, he's accused the uh Texas State House Speaker Dade Phelan of being drunk uh, in the House chamber. This is a clip of that. You guys can judge for yourselves. Mr. Speaker, I move adoption. Mr. Campbell, send out an amendment is acceptable to the officer. <laughs> is there objection to the officer amendment? And the chair has done the amendment. adopted. <laughs> the chair recognizes Mr. Mr. Johnson of Harris. Mr. Johnson of Harris to speak in opposition to the bill. <laughs> It's like being a fish show. I mean, uh, look at me. Like, look, we we'll sometimes have a beer here at work or on a fun half when we're hanging out. Um, he's not a little drunk. He's like a lot. Drunk. I haven't been he's, that drunk in a long time. I'm surprised I mean, he's able to stand there. <laughs> Mr. Justin, it was, it was the your amendment. It reminds me, honestly, Bring the gavel. Bradley, this is a hiccup, reference like, for just you, but it's, that's Dorinda Medley yeah, level yeah. slurring, uh, mm -hmm. Real Housewife of New York. But that uh, uh, that doesn't change anything about the Ken Paxton thing. It's just funny to see how like some of these state house people especially in a red state like texas they still are like drinking like they're you know nixon or they're like it's like the like punch ball in williamsburg virginia in 17 uh well, 17 i'm sure they are mad oh go ahead no we were, we were just saying before the show matt and i were mad i and i were laughing but, like they come out with this like serious corruption investigation to ken baxter's response it's like Dade was drunk at the office. Yeah. Like, Dade yeah. was drinking at work. And, and so the inside politics, we talked about this uh, with David Griscom uh, recently on Left Reckoning, but the, there's some, uh, there's, a, there's a split within the Republican Party, which of course controls Texas legislature, and Dade Phelan there is sort of a, I mean, he's a shitty guy, obviously, and he's obviously <laughs> drunk as a skunk right there. <laughs> um, uh, but he's a moderating sort of force on the Abbott and Paxton uh, mm. sort of element is my understanding. And so, like, typically when something like this happens, this is not the first time we've seen a politician absolutely, like, discombobulated and out to space. But often you'll say, like, oh, they were both exhausted and had a reaction to some medication, and you and you move on. But when you have splits in the party like this, and you have some guy who's, like, like under investigation for corruption and there's uh dumpsters going uh, up in flames behind the office <laughs> um then it starts to uh be a little bit like uh it's every man for himself sort of thing so yeah uh, uh griscom posted this here uh, texas ag ken pax has been accused by the texas uh by texas of breaking the law uh today it was reported a dumpster outside the ag office was on fire and that the texas ag office posts this very weird stuff going on so is it there. a metaphor for so it's either uh, the Texas legislature, or are they burning documents? That's the thing. It's, this is either a very timely coincidence, mm. or uh, a, a symbolic coincidence, or this is uh, actual evidence <laughs> being uh, destroyed right in front of a, a security camera. 
it really does like shock me just how uh, much that kind of like wild wild west mentality is still very there for a lot of lawmakers in states like this where i mean honestly it's just it, it, it's it's bonkers um all right guys we're gonna wrap up read some can items. i just make one point sure. the thing that occurred to me about that uh transports i am is they, they said the thing about we need to have a they granted my point about the actually uh this has gone too far and we're disallowing <laughs> um what they call biological women from dis, um from uh going on sports but they say we need to have a nuanced conversation or something like that right yeah we were having that as a society until the GOP decided to make trans people a target of their political campaigns. So that's the problem. And maybe we can get back to this you know, purely intramural academic debate about these things uh, once the fascists start using them uh, to uh, animate their base. Yeah, I mean, doctors and biologists were having detailed conversations about hormones and hormone levels and hormone therapy long mm -hmm. before people who 10 years ago were making fun of women's sports, like openly mocking it, decided yes. that this was the battleground for morality in the United States of America. You know, any ground you can see to them based on like fake biology that none of them don't really understand yeah. uh, is too much ground because it, you know it privileges things that just aren't true yeah. about gender about sexuality about biology like just things that people think are true from you know two years of bio, bio in high school or maybe like a uh, intro to bio class in college for a gen ed credit yeah and like you said they'll, they'll pivot like right from being oh i really care the, the sanctity of women's sports also who watches the wnba and why do they keep yapping about how much they should get paid yeah right it's there, the, was someone who, there was a there was a Republican who just did that. I can't recall who. Someone literally just did exactly what you just if, said. Uh, if, if, if anything, they were, they were attacking um, uh, the WNBA. Probably something. Uh, what's her name again? Brittany Griner. Brittany Griner. Griner. Yeah. Yeah. And and they were attacking the WNBA. And then someone pointed out how this guy just went on about uh, trans people. Uh, you know, uh, destroying the sanctity of women's sports in his vote against allowing trans people to take place in, uh, you know, uh, <clears throat> in sports just earlier, like last, mo like in the month or something. It's incredible. It's even like our, our like examples of how ridiculous it could be is actually what's going on because we are at the point where it's as ridiculous as can be. Yeah, if anything, it shows like a very patronizing view of women's sports. Like it's just like a cute little girls club where like women get together and play tennis and like the skirts and like and not like a real competition where you might have to face somebody who's better than you for any number of reasons, genetic or not. It's just like, well, if my daughter wants to run track and field and have a little fun after school, it's like, well, yeah, no one's stopping you from doing that. And basically, frankly, in based on the way divisions work and the way intramural sports work, you can play sports at whatever level you want, any level of competitiveness. Mm -hmm. But once you get into a, a league where people actually play sports, you have to accept that you might be not very good at how many best high school athletes flame out in colleges once they're actually around people who are better or equally as good as they are. And, you know, that's just the nature of competition, but treating like sports, like it can be, you know, rather the treatment of women's sports like it is both like a joke but also the sanctified space i think reveals a very like patronizing view of like what women need and deserve to feel space and along with them just also wanting to like i mean by them i mean republican politicians and lawmakers introducing bills that just basically allow them to reach up women's skirts to determine what kind of genitals they have yeah no but, like, let's check it like, out before you come into the bathroom right it's like I'm sorry, but if our social in, if if our social like institutions or our I mean honestly like women's sports it's barely an institution it's only been around for a few decades like if our sources of our outlets for entertainment for competition for like I I don't know whatever to however to define them but if they're not able to accommodate trans people then they're not worthy of existing like i, I i'm it's just like we're talking about movie theaters what, what are we talking about here i mean i love sports as much as anyone but if they cannot accommodate including trans people i don't give a shit about them being robust uh, uh it's just you know be inclusive or don't be that's it or don't exist <laughs>